What's up, guys? It is your boy, Bernardo from the BTN HD. And if this is your first time checking me out, make sure to hit that subscribe button and get the latest and greatest on VMware uh, tutorials and how-to videos. So, uh, I think on part one, we dealt with installing and as well as configuring our platform services controller for our vCenter or our vCenter service appliance. So today we're gonna go over on how to install vCenter service appliance. So let's get started. Okay, so the same thing that we did with the platform services controller, we need to locate the UI installer and double click on the installer application. And it's gonna launch this. And we're gonna click on install. We're gonna click on next here, accept the license and terms and click next. And on the part one, we did the platform services controller. But today, we are actually going to implement the vCenter service uh, appliance. This requires the external platform services controller, which we already did on part one. Once you pick this, we are going to click on next. Now, you're going to provide the vCenter name or the ESXi host, as well as the username and password. So I entered all that information and click on next. You're gonna get a nice little certificate warning. Click yes. If not, it's not going to continue. So click yes and select your folder where you want your appliance to be dropped into. I picked my data center and click next. From here, you want to select your compute resource. So I picked uh, one of my ESXi hosts and I clicked on next. From here, you're gonna give your virtual machine a name, a root password and make sure you confirm it. Uh, this is the information that I provided, but again, it's different for you, so you don't really need to do this. Click Next, and pick your deployment size. Now, there's a lot of them, uh, tiny, small, medium, large, extra large. Uh, one of the cool things about this wizard, they give you a breakdown of which one does what. The tiny only supports two CPUs, the memory, storage, uh, host, and how many VMs you can have up to. Okay, uh, I'm going to pick tiny because I don't really have like a hardcore server to house this. Two CPUs and 10 gigs is not that bad. Uh, storage size, so I left it as the default and click next. Now from here, you wanna pick your data store or where you wanna drop your vCenter service appliance into. And once you pick your data store, you do have the option to enable the thin disk mode. Click next. And now it's time to configure your network settings. Just like when we install the platform services controller, you gotta make sure you have an active DNS record. So within my DNS, I actually created a, a record uh, and I called it VCSA and I signed an IP address. And also you make sure you have a reverse lookup for that IP address, okay? If you don't have that stuff, when you enter that information within your network settings, it's not going to work. You're gonna get a nice D uh, warning, I think it turns red if it, it's not able to uh, do the reverse lookup or do the DNS thing. So once you enter all that information, click next. You get a nice little summary and click finish. It's going to start initializing itself, deploying the appliance. And if everything works well, you're going to get this nice little green check mark. This green check mark is always a good thing. And if you look right here, this is the actual address of where you can manage your appliance. So hit continue and you're gonna get the wizard again. So click next. Now, just like we did the platform services controller, we need to do a couple more things to the appliance so we could finish it. So we need to configure a time synchronization mode as well as NTP server. And you could disable or enable the SSH access. Uh, for my time synchronization node, I picked the host and I enabled the SSH access. Now, this is this is change in your environment, but for me, this is what I'm keeping within my lab. Uh, click next. And from your SSO configuration, remember, when we configured the platform services controller, we created a single sign-on, right? So this is what you're entering here, okay? Either the fully qualified domain name or the IP address. I am using the fully qualified domain name because my DNS server is working and the single sign-on domain that I use when I configured it with part one with you guys and the password that I provided and you click next. A nice little summary, click finish. You're gonna get this warning and the warning basically states that you will not be able to pause or stop the installation uh, from completing once it starts, right? So press okay to continue. And it's going to start the VMware authentication framework. And if everything works well, you're going to get the green check mark again that you successfully set up the appliance. That's a good thing. 
and then you have your appliance address. You're going to click on close and it's going to launch your browser. You have an option to pick the vSphere client HTML5. Uh, some functionality doesn't work. So I don't recommend this until VMware says, uh, okay, start using HTML5. But I'm really excited to use this because it's pretty cool. Click on the Flash version and then just log in. Use the username and password for your single sign-on. And that's it. You're inside your vCenter. The only thing that you need to do is actually manage your license, license it up, add or create a, uh, a what is it, a data center. And once you create your data center, you could do a cluster and then add your host inside your clusters and do all that good stuff to it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave comments right below. And if you have any questions, leave them at the bottom. Don't forget about hitting that like button. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.